Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 27th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. This video is going to be all about Tropical Storm Ida. I just want to show the big view for a second to note that we do have another storm potentially forming east of the Caribbean, but it is expected to turn toward the north harmlessly into the open central Atlantic, and is not expected to impact the Lesser Antilles Islands. So we're going to ignore that for now because Tropical Storm Ida is a handful. If we look at the zoomed in infrared loop, we'll see that there's a strong core of thunderstorms this morning. And yesterday we were talking about how when it was down near Jamaica, whether it was able to vertically stack beneath the mid-level circulation and generate a coherent tight vortex at the surface would be key as it moves through the Cayman Islands and toward Cuba. That did happen at some point late last night, and we now have a more stacked vortex nearing the Isle of Youth and Western Cuba today. This is the radar composite from the Barbados website showing the rotation here and the development of this core, and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but you'll see the, the low-level banding here and then wrapping around on the west side, and the deep convection has at times tried to curl around and form an eye wall, or at least half of one. It has been fighting a little bit of vertical shear, so you will see at some point in this radar loop the convection tries to wrap around for a second and then that curl kind of gets pushed back in and we're starting to see at the end of the loop perhaps a second attempt at that banding wrapping around to the up shear side. Right now shear is out of the southwest direction so trying to push most of this rainfall off to the northeast side but a key process in developing tropical cyclones is whether that convection can wrap around to the up shear side, that is, the side from which the shear is pushing. If the convection wraps around this side, that would facilitate a quicker intensification rate for Ida. Now, the storm has already been intensifying during the last 12 hours as it is, and current recon data shows that winds are now up to between 60 and 70 miles per hour at the surface on the east side of this, and the pressure you can see there, the last reported one was about 996. They went through here, and I don't know if that's been reported yet, but no, it has not, but I think the extrapolated value was about four millibars lower at 992. So it shows that the pressure is still falling here, and the winds are coming up, and we have a tightly wrapped circulation right underneath this area of convection. And again, on the radar, if we see this continue to try to wrap around, that would be a sign of continuing uh, organization of the storm's core. And this is beginning the process of forming what we call an inner core, where a ring of deep conve convection starts to propagate all the way around the center, eventually forming an eye wall. Now, the system is going to be passing over Cuba, over the next several hours today, and that could cause a slight disruption of the circulation, and we could see a brief weakening phase as the system moves over Cuba. However, it is moving at a fairly quick pace, and it won't take long to cross the island, so odds are, as soon as it pops out the other side, we are likely to see intensification resume in fairly short order, and we'll likely have a hurricane pretty soon here, and perhaps even before it hits this part of Cuba. In fact, there is a hurricane warning out now for this end of the island. This is the water vapor satellite loop, kind of showing you how, again, we do have just a little bit of shear still. There's a broad upper low over the central Gulf of Mexico, and there is west to southwest wind aloft, kind of hitting Ida on that left side. But you can see that there is upper level outflow expanding in that direction as well, outward from Ida. So the shear is not prohibitive in the sense that it's, it's applying pressure to the storm but it's not overwhelming the storm, and the storm has been strengthening despite this moderate value of shear over the last 12 hours or so. And as Ida moves into the Gulf of Mexico, unfortunately the shear is expected to slacken further, uh, improving the environment around Ida and probably facilitating uh, strong to rapid intensification as it crosses the Gulf. This is the uh, GFS model run. I'll actually show you the upper levels first since I'm talking about it. This is where Ida is now in the ball of purple. And the yellow here indicates the upper level low that I just showed you on water vapor satellite imagery. The blue area here is essentially the upper level ridge outlined by that upper level outflow from Ida on water vapor imagery. That's this expanse of milky white cirrus. That's represented by the ball of blue in this GFS forecast. And right now you can see that the ball of blue is mostly on the eastern side and it's being squished a little bit by this upper level trough to the west which can technically limit the storm somewhat as it's currently preventing an eyewall from closing off all the way around. 
But as we go forward into the Gulf of Mexico, this trough does weaken to the west of the storm. And yesterday we talked about the East Pacific storm perhaps bringing some of its outflow into the picture and shearing Ida from the west. Unfortunately, since Ida is developing quickly today and already getting stronger, it's likely to be able to fight this off and its own outflow on these model forecasts is setting up a barrier on the western edge that gives Ida space, if you will, and this is a very healthy upper-level anticyclone over the storm as this goes through the Gulf and as this moves toward the North Gulf Coast, we have a ball of blue more centered, more symmetric around Ida aloft. And this indicates that the upper level environment is favorable in general. If there is going to be wind shear, it's likely to be on the order of 10 knots, not prohibitive and not hostile. Certainly will not prevent Ida from becoming a strong hurricane. And if we look at the mid-level flow here, this will sort of show us the steering. This is Ida now, and this is that ridge off North Carolina we've been talking about. Again, this is the primary steering feature. All of the flow around that ridge is toward the northwest, and in this case, since Ida is moving toward western Cuba, that launching point now takes it in the general direction of Louisiana with some wiggle room in terms of where the exact landfall point will be. But in general, this motion is very high confidence because this ridge is very easy to forecast at the moment. So really, where it makes landfall comes down to little details, things that will never get perfect, but we can narrow this down to a window in the central Gulf Coast now. We're essentially taking, at this point, uh, a direct landfall in Upper Texas almost off the picture. Maybe not completely. There's still a chance that this sneaks pretty close into western Louisiana and could bring impacts to Upper Texas. But right now, odds are improving that Texas will likely not see a direct strike from Ida. And all model guidance suggests that it will be somewhere in Louisiana and potentially Mississippi in the most eastern uh, potential solution right now. Some models do get that far east toward New Orleans, Mississippi, uh, but the consensus is somewhere in central or southeastern Louisiana. You'll see the GFS goes in here to the east of Vermilion Bay. This is close to where the NHC has the storm, and you see the ball of red and black there indicating intensification. One of the things that is concerning about this storm is if you look along the track right now, this is a picture of the Gulf of Mexico showing a plot from the University of Miami of ocean heat content, showing essentially the amount of fuel available to a hurricane passing over. And of course, in the Caribbean, there's a lot, and that's where Ida is now. But this matters a lot more when the hurricane gets stronger because it tends to churn up colder water from great depths, and that'll typically limit a hurricane's intensity. But when there's warm water over a great depth, that cooling effect is lessened and the hurricane can have more fuel available as it's passing over. And as Ida moves toward Louisiana, the unfortunate fact is that the loop current which runs through here represents a corridor of warm and deep water that the storm is likely to nearly parallel on its track toward Louisiana on the current forecast. This is a bad scenario because it means that the hurricane could be reaching its peak intensity right where the maximum in ocean heat content is and then moving toward the coast at a very strong intensity. And this is the current expectation. In fact, the National Hurricane Center forecast has gotten stronger, now showing a major hurricane that is winds greater than 115 miles per hour on approach to Louisiana. The current peak is now forecast to be 120. And again, that value may get adjusted over time. It could even get higher. But the point is, it's going to be well in excess of 100. And that is a high confidence estimate at this point. All signs do point to this being a strong and highly dangerous hurricane on approach to the central Gulf Coast. And a multitude of hazards that are life-threatening are expected to occur. We now have a hurricane watch for wind-related impacts for most of the Louisiana coastline, extending to Mobile Bay. So that includes Mississippi. Note that it does include all of western Louisiana as well. And if we look at the wind probability forecast, you can see that the swath where 40 mile per hour winds are greater, so roughly dangerous wind that can cause power outages, etc., starts to arrive by Sunday morning local time. And now note that the eye here is forecast to arrive Sunday evening, but 12 hours before that, you could have dangerous wind already arriving. Everything in yellow shading here represents a 30% chance of receiving tropical storm force winds, so do take note it's still possible for the upper Texas coast to receive some kind of impact from this hurricane, so can't totally take you out of the picture yet in terms of potential hazards. There is some significant odds that tropical storm force winds 
could encroach on the Louisiana-Texas border. But the corridor is focused towards central and southeastern Louisiana beginning on uh, late Saturday night or Sunday morning. And obviously, storm surge in Louisiana, perhaps the biggest uh, problem given how flood-prone this area of the Gulf Coast is. And these are the values currently forecast on the NHC forecast track. These values will get adjusted somewhat. You'll likely see them change some, but it gives you an idea that obviously southeastern Louisiana, we're seeing already values of 7 to 11 feet forecasted by uh, the National Hurricane Center. And this extends, again, even outside the cone here all the way to Mississippi and Alabama could see storm surge. Even though you're outside this white cone, that doesn't mean there aren't impacts outside that cone. This only tells you where the eye is likely to track. It does not tell you where dangerous conditions are likely to occur. We're also watching for rainfall. And one thing to point out about uh, this system's track is if I go back to the steering pattern on the GFS, I'll show you again this ridge over the southeastern U.S. That's what's steering the storm. Now, eventually, the storm will start to move around the edge of that ridge and start curling more toward the north and the northeast as it moves into Louisiana. And you'll see it do this here, kind of hooking into Mississippi. Now, the nature of this curve means that the storm will slow down a little bit near and after landfall. And this curve to the right means that this area to the east of the landfall point is likely to see a tremendous amount of rain because it will get both the front end of the storm and the back end of the storm for a prolonged period of time. So a lot of water is likely to come down and we have a lot forecast here. We even have a spot of 15 inches forecast near New Orleans on this current forecast. And again, this will get adjusted too, but the point is strong risk of flash flooding is forecast in this portion of the central Gulf Coast and the full spectrum of hazards is likely to be levied on the area from central Louisiana to Mississippi and even far inland here. This is going to be a major hurricane, likely a very dangerous event, and folks should be preparing. And if you are in a flood zone, you need to have a plan to leave at this point. The NHC is giving you lead time. You have time before this weekend to actually execute a plan to protect yourself Make sure that if you're getting evacuation orders from your local officials that you are following them. It, hurricanes are very dangerous on the Gulf Coast, as many know, and Louisiana has dealt with several in recent memory. So do please take this seriously. This is likely to be a strong hurricane, and the National Hurricane Center is using strong wording in its messaging for a reason. This will be dangerous, so please take it seriously. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.